So for this week's media demonstration video, I'm going to show you how to use watercolor paint and salt to finish your red-eyed tree frog art lesson. So this is something that is so much fun. Um, we're going to be talking about the brushes I recommend, about the things you might need, um, and the type of salt I think works the best. But real quick, I want to just mention, like I always do, guys, you are helping me out big time. When you like my videos, when you subscribe to my YouTube channel, when you let me know in class that you've done these things, then I'm going to mail you one of these refrigerator magnets. I will send you a personal thank you note. It is making a huge difference, and it is so wonderful. Um, and I appreciate it so much. So please let me know that you're helping me out and I will send you one of these in the mail. And I just love to know that you guys have these at home to celebrate and put your artwork up on the refrigerator or any metal surface, whether it's a washer or a dryer or a door. Do what you need to do, guys, and I will send you a magnet. And thank you so much. All right, guys. So the red eyed tree frog, he's so cool. So this creature lives in... Central America. This one is commonly found in Costa Rica and it is an amphibian. So this little guy is amazing. He's known. Here's a great photo of one. This is absolutely brilliant bright green with his reddish orange eyes. He's got the yellow and the blue on the side and the orange feet. It's just a stunning animal. He's really cool looking. I have a lot of great pictures today that I'm going to share with you guys. Um, this next one I want to show you is one, uh, shows you one where he's taking a leap. That is really cool. So even though they have strong legs, they have real skinny legs. And I just wanted you to see that. They're so neat. So when we do the art lesson this week, um, you're going to get to learn all about these guys. So remember, guys, um, if you're going to do anything on your drawing with Sharpie, do the, sh I mean, if you want to add anything, I should say. Just always do it with Sharpie before you start using the art supplies. Sometimes it's okay um, to go back and do Sharpie on top of the art supplies, but in general, it's not okay because it will hurt your Sharpie. So I don't need to add anything else to this today. I just wanted to point that out to you. Um, sometimes people suddenly think, oh, I want to add a fly or, oh, I want to add a so-and-so. Do those things before you start with the watercolor paint and the salt today, okay? I'm not going to add anything else. I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that. All right, so the watercolor paint is like this. You guys are probably very familiar with it. I've got some paper towels handy, and I've got three sizes of brushes. And so that's because we're gonna do this whole painting today in watercolor paint. Um, and so for the little areas, you're gonna need a small brush and maybe a, a medium brush for the like regular sort of medium areas. But then for these really big areas in the background, you know what, don't do it with a little tiny brush, guys. You're gonna it's gonna take forever, it's not gonna look that great. Do it with a nice large brush and then it will spread the paint out more evenly and it will look really nice and it won't take forever. So, got my three brushes ready to roll. I've got my cup of water and I've got my salt. Now I wanted to talk about the salt. Any kind of salt will work, but this is kosher salt. And kosher salt is extra cool because the grains of salt are really big and they make large crystals on your artwork. And so what do I mean by making large crystals on your artwork? Well, you'll have to stick around to the end of this media demo to see what that means and when you see it on my example. But um, what happens is, is each tiny grain of salt, which is not tiny, these are nice and big, I should say, each grain of salt sucks up a little bit of watercolor paint from underneath and the salt actually turns a color. Um, but underneath where the salt was, it leaves like sort of like a starburst pattern of white paper. And so what that does is sometimes it looks sort of like misty rain. Sometimes it looks almost like fog. Sometimes it looks like um, stars. Sometimes it looks like snow. Um, it's just really, really cool. But the trick is you have to paint, right? I'm going to do the whole frog first. I'm going to do all this first. And then you're going to put the paint on the background and then you put the salt on. And then you have to be patient. It's hard to do, but you got to just let it dry overnight. So I'm going to do all of this for you today. I'm going to get started and then I'm going to move into time lapse, which moves really fast. And then I'm going to come back and do the conclusion. And then I'm going to let it sit overnight. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to come back again and I'm going to show you how to rub the salt off. So this video is going to be a normal length of time for you guys, but it's going to take longer for me, but it's really worth it. 
and I hope you'll do the same thing. All right, guys, it's time to get started. So today we're using watercolor paint, like I said, and we're gonna use salt. This is kosher salt, which has the larger crystals. I've got my water, I've got my paper towels, I've got my paint, and I'm gonna start with the frog. I love this frog so much. I've got an image nearby to show me, make sure that I have the colors right. So here's the example. I'm gonna leave that nearby so I can see it. And I'm gonna start with my medium brush. And so I'm gonna dip my brush in the water. And what I wanna show you is, um, you need to just kind of get your paint uh, soaking with water. So what does that mean? It means I'm going to add water a few times and just let it sink into my green, right? I'm going to rinse out my brush. I'm going to do the same thing to my yellow. And so I'm going to just lift some water out of my cup with my brush and I'm just going to sort of fill up this paint cup with some water because I want to make sure I have these colors ready, that they're ready when I'm ready. So I'm getting my paint ready by doing this. So I'm lifting the water out of the cup. See, it's still clean. And I don't recommend pouring it, guys. You might make a huge mess. But I know that I want the green, the yellow, and the blue. And I know that I'm going to want orange. And the truth is I'll probably want all the colors. But I'm going to start out with these colors first. So... Now that they have had a chance to sink in a little bit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my green and stir it, and I'm going to start lifting it out and putting it on my mixing tray. That is important, guys. You're not just going straight from the paint into the, onto the paper. You're going to do some color mixing. Now, instead of just dipping my brush directly in my yellow, I'm going to rinse it out. Now I'm going to stir my yellow up, just like I did my green. And I'm going to start lifting it out and putting it on the mixing tray. So the mixing tray is pretty self-explanatory. I guess you guys can guess what you do on the mixing tray. Does anybody know? <laughs> That's right. You mix. We're going to mix. And why are we mixing? We're trying to create this amazing bright green for our frog. So I am going to continue to pull that yellow out and mix it in. Also, because I want to make sure I have quite a bit of paint all ready to roll. And I'm very, it's very important to be prepared. All right, guys. So I'm going to start adding the paint into my frog's body. And so I'm just lifting it now out of my tray. And I'm just going to take my time. So I am going to do a lot of this in time lapse. I just wanted to show you a couple things before we move on. So I've done my frog's head. I could just go ahead and do the eyes right away, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that because I don't want the, the green and the red to mix together. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue to get a little more paint here on my brush. And I'm going to uh, do a little color mixing. So I'm going to take some of this darker green now. And I'm just going to add it around the eyes just for fun. Just to show you what I mean. Because when you have uh, wet watercolor paint on wet watercolor paint, it's called wet on wet. Which makes good sense, right? But it's going to kind of mix on your paper for you a little bit. So the water is going to act like a vehicle. It's going to take two colors and sort of mix them together. So I'm just going to let that sit the way it is and it's going to look really cool. I want to make sure that the green is totally dry before I go back and use the red and the orange on the eyes. Speaking of which, I just realized I need red. This is a red-eyed tree frog after all. So I need to put some water in my red so it's ready when I'm ready. All right, guys, I'm going to go into time lapse now and then um, we'll just, I'll come back and do a conclusion for today and then I'll do a second conclusion tomorrow when I rub off the soap.
it got a little bit crazy there for a minute. I don't know if you saw, I ended up dropping some of my yellow paint right into my paint cup, but that's okay. There are, you know, things happen. I wanted you to notice that if your paint gets dirty at all, that all you got to do is just take a paper towel and just press it down into there. It'll lift the color. See how I'm just kind of lifting it out? It's also a great way to dry your paint out. Uh, looks like I need a new set of yellow, don't I? But what I'm doing here is I'm just cleaning these out with my paper towel. And that way, they're not going to just soak and soak overnight. Um, it's kind of fun because it makes your paper towel look pretty cool. And sometimes people like to save those. But um, also, you can also clean up the side of your tray here with a paper towel. It's just a really great way to make sure your paints are ready for next time. I'm going to just go ahead and give my brushes a nice rinse here. And uh, they're ready. So I'm going to let this dry overnight. This and I'm going to let this dry overnight. And I like these paper towels, like I said, so I'm going to let those dry overnight as well. And uh, so when we come back tomorrow, I'm going to show you how to rub the salt off of this painting. And you can never tell what the salt's going to do, guys. It might make really big crystals. It might make little tiny ones. Like I said, it could, it could look a lot of different ways. So... This is a, a really fun drawing. It's a fun way to finish it. I'll see you tomorrow morning when we rub off the salt. See you soon. All right, guys. So I've let this sit for quite a while and I'm going to now brush off my salt. So these have dried and that's why I was saying sometimes people like to hang on to these. They're kind of fun. Um, they make interesting things in other art projects if you want to save them for another purpose. So uh, my brushes have also dried, my paint has dried, so I'm putting my things away. But what I want to show you is what happened with the salt. So I'm just going to start rubbing this and I'm going to use my hands flat on the paper. You can do whatever it works for you. I'm going to knock that salt off. Now because I use yellow for my background, the salt has a very tiny bit of color in it. You can barely see it. I don't know if you can see that at all, but what I can see here, and I hope you can see at home, is the cool patterns left over by the salt. So I'm going to get this a little closer. I want to make sure you can see this. Can you guys see that? It's so cool. So I did uh, put the salt everywhere. So I don't know if you saw that in the time lapse, but when I was done painting, I put salt on the whole thing. And it's not a ton of salt. If you look at how much this is, if you were to measure this, I'd say, gosh, what is that? Like a teaspoon of salt, maybe? You don't need a lot. Um, that salt's going to go in the trash. I don't need it anymore. This salt, I have a little lid. I'm going to save it for another day. This, Just so you know, this will last a really long time. But that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. I hope you will try using the salt on top of your watercolor paint. It just looks so cool. I love it. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.